Cortisol is a stress hormone that your adrenal glands release and it helps your body deal with stressful situations. But when your cortisol is too high, let's say over weeks or months, it can lead to inflammation and a host of other mental and physical health problems from anxiety to weight gain to heart disease. So in this video, I'll go over symptoms of high cortisol, what high cortisol can do to the body if left unchecked, and five ways that you can get your cortisol levels back to normal. So stay tuned till the end. Hi guys, you've seen Arsenal Media Pharmacist here on YouTube where I help you make better decisions about your health and wellness. So if that's something you're into, be sure to smash that like button below now. Also, while you're at it, hit that subscribe button too and don't forget to follow me on Instagram for more behind the scenes. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Cortisol is one of those several steroid hormones in the body that produce naturally. And yes, cortisol levels do go up when you're stressed. Let's say when you hear that alarm in the morning and get startled or when you have a close call on the highway, but it doesn't deserve its bad rap entirely because remember, you need cortisol to support overall health. It helps us wake up, gives us energy during the day and lowers at night to help us sleep and rest. It even helps you get your fight or flight in check. Let's say when you're running away from a mountain lion. No. But when your cortisol levels are too high for too long, it can do more harm than good. And this is what this video is going to tackle. What to do to get these levels in check. And over the last 20 years, studies have increasingly revealed that moderate to high cortisol levels may lead to an array of health issues. The first you may have already heard of, which is weight gain. This is because cortisol may increase appetite and signal the body to shift metabolism to start storing fat. And when fat and, and carbohydrate metabolism is stimulated, this helps to create a surge in energy in the body. While this process is essential for survival situations, it also increases your appetite, which means elevated cortisol levels can cause cravings for sweets, fatty, and salty foods. This means you're more likely to indulge in french fries and a milkshake than you are a well-balanced meal and an excess of cortisol also can lead your body to produce less testosterone which means this may cause a decrease in muscle mass as well as slow down how many calories your body burns ultimately making stress control a big part of weight loss journey in addition to weight gain caused from high cortisol levels you have difficulty concentrating also known as brain fog lack of energy difficulty sleeping an impaired immune system risk of developing certain chronic diseases like high blood pressure heart disease type 2 diabetes diabetes, osteoporosis, and in very rare cases, very high cortisol levels can lead to Cushing syndrome. And when we tie it back into obesity, obesity may lead to an even further increase in more cortisol, which creates the chicken or the egg scenario. Which came first? Was it the chicken or the egg? Was it the obesity that caused the high cortisol or the high cortisol that caused the obesity? Or maybe it's just the American diet. Whatever the cause, I highly recommend working with a qualified health professional to get to the bottom root cause if you suspect high cortisol is the reason for some of those conditions. Along with this, you may want to introduce some of these effective lifestyle habits to help you better manage your cortisol levels. So let's dive right in. The first thing you want to have right is to make sure you're getting the right amount of sleep. Chronic sleep issues such as obstructive sleep apnea, insomnia, or shift work have been associated with higher cortisol. Cortisol. Please talk to your doctor if you suspect any of these to be the culprit. Sleep hygiene is huge, guys. Having a bedtime routine, exercising early in the day, stopping caffeine six hours before bedtime, these are some of the many things you can do to ensure you're getting restful sleep. The second recommendation is to make sure you aren't overdoing the exercise. Intense exercise increases cortisol shortly afterward, but will decrease a few hours later. This short-term increase helps coordinate growth of the body to meet the challenge. That said, overdoing it can have the opposite effect. Therefore, aim for around 150 to 200 minutes of mostly low to moderate intensity exercise each week and allow yourself time to rest between workouts. The third thing I recommend is to breathe. Studies have shown decreases in cortisol after participants incorporated deep breathing into their routine. This is because deep breathing stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system, which is responsible for relaxation and lower cortisol levels. Meditation, yoga, tai chi, and qigong are great ways to practice deep breathing. 
The fourth thing I recommend is tend to your spirituality. Studies show that adults who express spiritual faith experience lower cortisol levels in the face of life stressors such as illness. Prayer is also associated with reduced stress, anxiety, and depression. But if you do not consider yourself spiritual, these benefits may also be available through meditation, developing a social support group, and performing acts of kindness. The fifth thing I recommend is to take care of a pet if you're able to. Relationships with animal companions can also reduce cortisol. What was interesting was reading one study that show, even showed that an interaction with a therapy dog reduced distress and cortisol during a minor procedure in children. And due to the well-known stress-reducing benefits of pets, many long-term care homes and university college campuses have introduced pet therapy as a natural cortisol and stress-reducing activity. The sixth thing is to eat a nutritious diet. Research has shown a strong relationship between a healthy gut microbiome, which is all the microbes living in your gut, and improved mental health. Therefore, consuming foods to support a healthy gut may help reduce stress, anxiety, and improve your overall health. If you're looking for specific foods, whole grains work great because they're rich in plant-based polyphenols and fiber, which may support stress levels and gut health. Whole fruits and vegetables have an abundance of antioxidants and polyphenols that fight cell-damaging free radicals. These are just two to name a few. And you can't talk about a nutritious diet without making sure you're properly hydrated. Dehydration has been linked to a temporary increase in cortisol levels, making it even more important to drink water throughout the day. This is because when our body dehydrates, it can be seen as a stressor within the body which could affect cortisol levels. So guys, please make sure you don't neglect water. And as far as supplements go, the one that stands out the most and acts as an adaptogen is ashwagandha. I made a video that goes into this in more depth, so if you wanna learn more about ashwagandha, click the top right-hand corner to watch my video after this one. And if you're interested in trying ashwagandha, be sure it's from a reputable company and speak with a healthcare professional first. And to keep it real with you guys, this is an area of health that I'm still trying to understand as well. And what has helped me, and maybe it's important to share with you guys as well, is the alternative types of therapies like the Japanese practice of Shinrin Yoku, which literally translates to forest bathing. I didn't even know that this was a practice and was doing it before I knew that this was an official therapy that was developed in Japan during the 1980s and as a cornerstone of prevent preventative healthcare and healing in Japanese medicine. It's when you literally spend time amongst the trees calmly and quietly and breathing deeply as you observe the nature around you. And the positive effects of forest bathing on cortisol levels were described in the International Journal of Biometeorology. The reason why I enjoy hiking is literally because of this reason. I get the sense of calm and peace when I'm immersed in nature that I don't feel when I'm in an urban city environment. I'll leave for you a resource in the description that explains this further, which might be something useful to you if you wanna incorporate it in your daily life. But all in all guys, the reality is cortisol is important for reacting to psychological and physiological stressors, and for the most part, the amount of cortisol produced is highly regulated by your body to ensure the balance is always correct. But chronically high cortisol that is unchecked can lead to poor health, and it's not something to ignore. Trying to lower stress levels is the best way to lower cortisol naturally. So by making simple lifestyle changes to live a healthier, more active life, you may be able to reduce the amount of stress you experience and keep your cortisol levels normal. If you have any tips or tricks you know of, please leave them in the comments below. And that's it guys. I hope that this video helps give you a better understanding on lowering high cortisol. All in all, I also hope that this video was insightful to you guys. The only thing I ask in return is just a simple like down below for the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for sticking tuned all the way till the end. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.